so let's get into the pros and cons really fast before we get into the actual POB and uh, explanation. So starting with pros, it is an extremely fast and comfy sanctum runner. It has insane single target DPS. We can dot cap easily. It's incredible invitation farmer. It's allowing you to kill stuff while moving thanks to the damage over time type, which is incredibly helpful in sanctum. It's avoidable. I mean, most of the gear you can get under 20 div, and honestly, for the cheap version of the build, it's like cool, maybe. Um, tattoos are back, so it lets you scale this build again very easily. There are two playstyles that were involved in this, and I'll show them later. It's lazy or active, and you will see what I mean by it, but the word is automation. Um, you can run all the unique, non unique relics without needing a lot of non unique relics. To support you in that only original sin is kind of unachievable with this build so that will be in a con um and yeah now two cons well you cannot do no hit sanctum runs you just can't uh you will get hits a of the golems is just too bad and it's annoying and this version of the build cannot map so you need to get to level 90 or around that doing something else i recommend dd on elementalists that's a classic duo so you know but you have other abilities to choose from and it requires a lot of investment if you want to make it like hc viable especially for invitation farming and you will have to sacrifice quite some dps for it now for the mixed ones um it requires an active playstyle if you want to be very efficient but being efficient is something that is pretty good and uh, well i mean you want to make as many div per hour especially on trade league so you will have to play actively if you want to do that. Um, at the same time, it is theoretically SSF viable, but uh, most of the stuff you will have to farm out or uh, you have to sacrifice a lot of damage to you know uh, get on the same level as trade league gear, which is very cheap, by the way. Um, and in theory, you can switch to a mapping build, but you have to switch a lot of stuff around, and that's not really fun. Uh, so don't do that. And I will not cover it here. Okay, so. For now, that's it, and uh, I invite you to hear my explanation and POB, and for all that are already sold, you got POB in the description, and have fun with it. So, it's me again, um, with another build. This time, we decided to refresh the good old mobile mischief. Um, it's a build I've played two weeks ago and I made a guide and you can find it on this YouTube channel. But this time, well, we got a couple of new toys and um, it looks very good. Actually, it looks way better than it used to be. And now you can scale it even more than you were able to do before. So in general, if you've been looking to spice up your gameplay with maybe some Sanctum runs or invitation farming, here is the right choice for you. Now, let's start with the disclaimer I already mentioned in this pros and cons. You can't map with this build. So if you want to map, if you want a jack of all trades build that can do both sanctum mapping everything, just go and play some Hexblast Miner. It's going to be better. But this thing is specifically tailored around sanctum. You will be able to run faster than Hexblast Miner, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And in general, it's way more comfortable and you can do way more like AFKing while running. You don't have to throw the mines, you don't have to play in exactly the right way to get the Sanctum done. So now, maybe first why you should run Sanctum, okay? Just a quick disclaimer. First of all, it's uh, one of the best uh, simple without doing 20 different thousand stuff, strats and uh, party stuff uh, things that will give you the most divine per hour in poe with knowledge investments and if you know what you're doing this is the best divine per hour strategy in the whole fucking game so it's good um you can run it without the party without any dedicated players you don't need aura bots you don't need three thousand different things you just go into sanctum you do it you get your divines, you're gone. Um, you're guaranteed to make a huge profit every single run. The 
Forbidden Tomes are basically nothing. Like they cost 10 to 20 chaos on the high level 83. So you get those and you get at least three times as much every single run. I mean, this is if you're absolutely unlucky. And um, I would say you have a chance to drop originals in Relic. It's you know one of those chase items. But if you drop it, you make a bank like this. You can buy two Mage Blood, three Headhunters, and you're all good. It's like 200 div or plus. So, and it's a guaranteed sell. Everybody wants to buy it. Now, it's fun. Um, it's sometimes challenging. It requires you to actually think during your run, not to do random shit. Look, actively play the game if you want. But at the same time, if you don't want to do it, you can just fucking run through it and you will earn way less, but at the same time, you still can make a profit every single time and you can watch a series on other monitor or something. So that's also an option. Now, in general, this is a high skill cap type of thing. Like you can push this build very high in how you play it and with timings you, you do, because in general, the gameplay loop is either you automate everything and then you have less efficient type of gameplay or you do most of the stuff alone which will give you way more agency over what you're doing but also you will be faster so now that we spoke of that let's get right into the gameplay and how it should look so so let's start with the gameplay since that's what we are all here about and um, I have to start with saying that this item is absolutely mandatory. There is no getting around. This is literally what we built this on. And this is the thing about this build. The Death Wish skill. So what does it do, you might ask? And um, we have um, only support gems inside. You will see it in POB. We use the Death Wish, which makes us channel the spell. We somehow control like channel it onto a minion if we unclick the skill it will explode the all the minions we have affected and deal damage based on how many we affected so all in all easy you click i have it on right click you right click you channel it you see i channeled it onto my all my golems now i let go of my mouse boom they all die right and they deal insane amount of damage but the trick is you don't need to channel it onto every single minion especially while running sanctums the whole idea of the build is you walk around you walk around and you quickly click boom quickly click boom that's it you just click it from time to time now how can we sustain our minions because you don't want to like, destroy them and then have to resummon them all the time right um that's thanks to our elementalist node the leech of primordial this makes our golems be resummoned every four seconds, right? And now, it's not like it resummons all five golems every four seconds. It resummons every single instance of a golem. It starts whenever you destroy it. So I destroy one, it starts counting. One, two, three, four. I destroy a second one two seconds later, it again starts counting four. So I get it every two seconds. You know what I mean? I mean, it's pretty simple. The gist of it is they respawn and that's all you want so now how do i have so many golems you might ask in last video um this was achieved uh, through uh two primordial gems so primordial mites and i think more ancestral vision something i don't know there was another one that gives you another plus one to golems and that was all it did um for us but now we don't need it we only need the primordial might. I mean, we don't exactly need it, but this is almost as the second most important item in this build, okay? You all want to get it. It's cheap as hell. You can see um, it costs right now 80 chaos, so it's it's pretty cheap. Now, if you have it, um, you'll see we don't need the plus one to summon golems because we instead use the golem hordes. So, Stone Golem of Hordes is 
an alternate tram. You will have to get it from the lab or just buy it. It's not really expensive. At least not the um let me put it this way, at least not the 2120 version, which is very, very expensive. But even I don't have it. In the showcase that you sh that you saw, um we don't have level gems. Like all my awakened gems are level one without even quality on them. So I'm missing a lot of damage in this. This is level 20 and only 23 quality, so whatever. This is only this is only level 20, which you would want 21 with 23. This is in the endgame gems, which I have in the POB. In the POB, you have three different version, versions of the build. You will see it uh, when we come to it. And I have only Empower 3, so you will need Empower 4. And then your damage is going up. But even without it, the showcase, I guess, showed you. This goes like this. You detonate the, the, the golem. People like the, the, the Sanctum mobs die. So now you see I de-equipped. Now I have to summon all my golems. Remember you have to do it once. You have to get once all five of your golems. You don't forget about once because the more you have, the better it is. The more like leeway you have. Now let's go to the Sanctum. And maybe I'll just show you one quick uh, example of how to do it. So let's start. Another important stuff. You have two ways to play this build, right? You have the way of running around and using convocation, which summons minions to you, so that they stay. So you run into the enemy, you convocate your minions, you click, you destroy the enemy, you go on. This is one way. The other way is using automation. So I link my automation to my convocation. Now I use it, and now. It will use itself all the time. So I just run around and click right button. That's all I do. So in the showcase, I was doing it like that. But for the sake of the video, so we have more control, I'll show you the manual convocating. And manual convo convocating is way more precise, so to say. So you want to use it. Like it, it is the optimal way of playing the build. But even with the automated one, you will sometimes miss some guards but it's really not that bad you want to do it if you are lazy so i apparently am so you see we go we see this guy our golems will come close to us every time so i don't need to convocate i'm not convocating right now i'm running around they are targeting them alone i press right click you see they die i press right click and now let's say i want to kill this guy i convocate boom he is gone right I run around, I run around, okay, and now, okay, these guys convocate, boom, dead, dead, room is done, that's basically it. So this is basically the gameplay loop you will have in Sanctum. This is incredibly fast. Outside of the fighting rooms, which are very easy on this build, because you can just run around and your golems will run up to the enemies and you just detonate them and they die. Uh, so this is extremely easy. Um, it's very fast because you just run, you detonate, you don't really look away, right? It's all those rooms that you have to kill all the guards before you can proceed, it's very fast, okay? Now, um, another thing. So let me get out of the Sanctum. I'll show you on the boss. Um, when you go for single targets, be it on the Sanctum bosses or on the standard bosses, because this is a very good bossing build, you will use a node called the Defiled Forces. Whoever played Elemental SDD, Ignite, they know. Basically what this does is that whenever you curse um, an enemy, it refreshes the duration of your Ignite. With the Replica Ember Wake, so we reduce durations of our Ignite. So if we Ignite an enemy, it will deal a lot of damage in very short time. But if you use the file Forces, you can keep this going forever. So the whole gameplay loop of single target damage is that you want to ignite an enemy with all you've got. So you want to summon as many minions as you can, because as I told you, the more minions you, we have, max 13, as you can see on the on the screen, uh, can affect 13, right? So max 13, you want to summon all those 13 minions, five golems plus eight. I summon skeletons, you can summon other stuff, but skeletons is just comfy. You summon all of them. You affect all of them, pre-stack the boss, let go of it, boom, he gets ignited, right? And you want to 
as fast as possible, put an Arganist brand on him. And in Arganist brand setup, we have elemental weakness, we have flammability, and we have a flame surge. So we are cursing. Arcanist Brand is going to be cursing the enemy over and over again. And then you don't want to again ignite the enemy. No, you don't want to, you don't want this first initial ignite to ever run out. If it does, because some bosses have invulnerability phases, you will have to do it again. And but still, you want to be using Arcanist Brand on the enemy, not your skill. Your skill should be used only once. So to show you uh, what I mean, I don't know if I will pull it off, but I'm too lazy to give it a couple of tries so let's do let's do standard ether okay um and i will show you what i mean so we go into ether i know he will spawn right there right so he's not here yet i have to come up there so what i want to do is i want to summon all the eight skeletons now i have 13 minutes i want to come up channel onto all of them boom and now we curse. We, I spam Arcanist Brand on the guy. Look at the damage. He's dying super fast, okay? You see, now we lost our... Um, how we call it? Now we lost our... Uh, Ignite. But it doesn't matter. He's almost dead anyway. So this will be fine. Uh, I lost one here. Okay. So you see, now, again, channel all, Arcanist Brand, he dies, right? This is... This is all you've got to do. On bosses like Eater, yeah, he has invulnerability phases. But on bosses in boss invitations, in feared, you just channel once, Atsiri goes like this. Shaper goes like this. Everybody dies super fast. You're basically dot capped on this build with super little investment, and you will see it in the POB. Um, so now, uh, okay, this is nothing. Uh, what else? Well, you've got to understand there's a lot of stuff going on with the gear. That is quite important. Um, but maybe this was the gameplay. Now let's go into the POB and uh, I'll maybe showcase what's going on right there. See ya. Okay, so POB. Um, Let's see what we have here. We have the notes section. Um, this is not as extensive as in the DD video because I don't really know what people can ask here. Uh, I didn't have many questions for the previous build, but I'll update it once uh, some questions flow in. Um, so first of all, uh, this guide is for the level 90 plus. I already said it a couple of times. All the stuff I've said already you've got here. This is Tripolar Bear uh, video for um, Elemental SDD. It's from this league, so it should be updated. I watched it, it looked legit, so here we go. You can use that build, it's very good. And it doesn't get that much respect since you are pathing around the same places, so not many regrets will, be need, will need to be used for it. Um, yes, um, now the problem is um, if you can see. Oh, actually, that's fine. Uh, I wrote that the tattoos don't disappear, but they do. So, whatever. Um, but let's see. There is FAQ. And here is the important part, because how to calculate our damage. Maybe I'll start with that, because everybody always wants to see the damage. Um, now we are on the starting tree with starting skills and starting gear. To calculate the damage. And it's for any stage. It's for your own build too. You go into configuration, uh, into calculations, right? You select your stone golem socket, all right? And you click here on show minion stats. Now, you look at life. This is what interests you. Right now, the life is 100,490. 1, and let me explain again, because I forgot to mention it before. How do we scale the damage of this build? This is a damage over time build that deals fire damage, okay? So, of course, we have the usual suspects. Fire damage over time multiplier, fire damage, damage over time multiplier, all that stuff, right? But this particular build, same as DD, scales corpses. This build scales minion life. 
so that's why we are using stone golem it has a lot of life on base skill and now how do you scale the life of the golem well it's pretty easy you get the levels of the stone golem gem up that's all you want and you get minion life on the tree so let me show you um after you get the life right which you scale through the tree and through the gems and everything okay that's self-explanatory you want more damage you take that life you go into configuration so we can see there is nothing checked that shouldn't be checked everything is as basic as it can because i don't want to add the dps numbers that's not what i'm here for this is a good build by itself you post it into the enemy corpse life because that's how pob works i already have it done you will have empty space here. You paste the 100 and 1000. And now, when you want to see your damage, you go into main skill, Death Wish, because that's what we are exploding the minions with. And be sure to switch to minion explosion. And now you remember, when I was saying you have to channel your uh, skill onto multiple minions, right? So yeah, this is here in stages. And you can have max 13. So if I put in 13, we have 13 million DPS on a single target, okay? But this is not how we are running Sanctum. We are running Sanctum as I showcased with just clicking once. So it's on stage one, right? So even on stage one, it deals already 6 million damage per second. So I'm just saying it's pretty good. Um, this is a little padded up at the moment because uh, we have our uh versus counted in but it doesn't matter this as you've seen this is enough to kill everything um so you can start running sanctums this is level 85 character now why do i say on level 90 because on level 90 you will have a couple of spur points you know that you will be able to put into the attributes into resistances as i do not put anything like that on my gear because this is no point of doing that there's just no point you have to solve those problems yourselves and you know you'll be good to go but be sure to be resistance capped be sure to be um attribute capped and you will be good in the final pop i'll add resistances manually so you can see the ehp um why do we have so low evasion rating well because we are running haste for the um invitations i mean sorry for the uh sanctum for invitations you obviously want to switch from haste to grace and it will help you out uh, to survive at least for a second where you have to deal the damage um now for the tree from important stuff first of all this is almost a standard d tree you just dead take the minion nodes additionally this is nice note lord of the dead you want to definitely remember to take this note this gives you one more summoned golem um it's great for you um then you want to have the file forces from the non-started things because you want to still be able to deal the single target damage to the sanctum bosses um what else you want to take the sacrifice because it gives you the uh, life for the minions you give it gives regeneration for you and for your minions which is very good for them to survive and you also need the minion mastery. You want to get the 40% increased cooldown recovery rate for your convocation. This lets you convocate more often. Extremely important. Be sure to take it. Now, um, we take the Righteous Army. We take the Redemption. Why don't we take Spiritual Aid? Let me explain. We have Scourge. That gives us basically the same thing. But we don't have to pick it on the tree. So... This is one node that is useless for us once we have scourge. Um, now, uh, what else do we have here? So for the tree, this is basically it. Um, I'll show you maybe, because there's only two trees, there is the character from the showcase. Um, and it has a lot of stuff in it that I will have to explain. So um, let's first go into the items for the starting out tree. Um, you need those items you need scourge you need um mouth mischief now you should have magna eclipses or vox lunaris or whatever that is like those the uh, twilight temple unique map 
uniques that drop in the end, one of these, um, because they give you level of socketed gems. And you want to put right in the shield your stone golem gem, because your stone golem doesn't need any more support gems that you see here. You want to scale life, life, and life of the golem. So you have minion life, and you put an empower to boost the levels of the golem and the minion life gem. So it scales even harder. So we put those three into the Magna Eclipses. It gives levels to empower, which is very important. And it all stacks very well. And, you know, shenanigans is great. Okay, trust me. Then you need more mischief. Obviously, you need the helmet. And I have it right here that you need Replica Ember Wake. Question is why? Um, because I feel like this build works the best when you don't have to wait for the guards to die. And you, with this ring, you will not. Because it gives you so much uh, damage, uh, applies faster with Ignites, like 51%, you see here. Once you ob obviously quality it, because you should quality it with the um, good catalysts, you know? Um, and yeah, outside of that, you get those items. This is, I don't know, 10c, 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 and this is probably like 2 div, and you're good to go, right? Get your life, resistances, get suppression if you want. For softcore, you don't really care. You can fucking run naked, and you will deal so much damage, so um, it really doesn't matter. For hardcore, I would recommend getting some suppression, so you don't randomly get gipped in the, in the sanctum. And I wouldn't recommend doing this uh, for invitations. I mean, for invitations, I would switch around a lot of gear. You can watch my previous guide. I used to do invitations on that character. It was better geared, but whatever. It's fine. Now, um, what do you do next? Because this is the big part, right? This is where you want to scale from this point now. You're level 90, 85, whatever, and you want to get way more damage. You want to deal as much damage as I did in the short case. Surprisingly, this is not very difficult. So, there are a couple of things here that are absolutely extremely important. And one centerpiece of this build is the elegant hubris timeless jewel. Okay? Why? Because you want to allocate supreme ost ostentation. This node gives you no attribute requirements for a build. So, all the gear you have, all the nodes you have, everything you can disregard the attributes from now. You don't need to care at all about what you have on the gear, right? At all. That's the first thing. The second thing. Tattoos. So, if you would tattoo the whole tree as I did, right? Um, you would lose all the attributes and you couldn't use your normal skills, right? But with this, you can tattoo every single intelligence node you can find and put the Hinekora Warmonger tattoo on it, which we used to have in Total League when I did the build two leagues ago. This gives your minions increased maximum life. It's absolutely insane. Every single one of these nodes is scaling your damage by 5%, 5%, 5%. Very good. Once we have as many of them, you have a lot of DPS. So, just to show you, um, I have already calculated everything in the notes. So, let's see. This is Golem Life from the showcase video. So, basically, three times as much. So, you deal 18 million damage, right? With one stage. With 13 stages, you are dot capping. So, what you saw on the Eater Awards. That was a dot cap damage, basically, if I haven't fucked up something. But I usually won one stage him. Um, so yeah, once you do this, get this, um, there is one important thing. You should find the timeless jewel for you. As you can see, why do I have these two nodes? Because they give me 80% of increased maximum life for my minions. Why do I have this? Same situation. Uh, I forgot this should also be here. You can also take the masteries, even though this is affected by the timeless jewel. Just a tip. 
Um, so you want to find a timeless jewel that is at least three of these. I mean, this is maximum actually, but at least three of 80% increased life or 80% increased damage. Doesn't matter, one or the other. How do you do this? You click find the timeless jewel. I will link a video from Ziggy D that he explained all this uh, some time ago. Uh, you go elegant hubris, okay. You try to do it on this socket because it has a lot of nice, uh, nice things around it. And you just follow the video of Ziggy D. I'm not gonna explain it all here. He did 15 minutes video, and it would take me 30 knowing me. So uh, just link in the description, and you will find the perfect jewel for you, okay. Um, okay, so outside of that, there is nothing very important. Uh, Eldritch Battery is a big part of this build, but it's already on the starting tree. You don't want to use mana, you want to reserve all the mana. We have four auras that we are using, right? Um, I will show the skills now. We're using the Tom, I mean, uh, sorry, Malevolence with Divine Blessing. So you want to use your energy shield to activate the Divine Blessing. We're using Haste. I think haste is better to use permanently instead of uh, having to divine bless it since it gives you way more movement speed that you don't want to click the button every single time for and uh, besides that we're using determination just so you don't die every time something hits you and gets through to you defiance banner and um and yeah that's basically it for us right um, then we have a setup with the brand, as i shown you. We use Flame Dash from time to time, especially in Sanctum, if you want to get through one to the other um, locations, especially the ones that are floating in the air and you just would have to run around or shield charge around, which we also use. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, big plus of the build, you do not need a six link. So just go into the trade side. Um, put some insane stats on there, like 22 suppression, a lot of life, um, resistances, attributes, whatever you want. Attributes are useless later on, remember that. Um, and you get some insane gear, you don't have to 6 link it, you just 6 socket it, 4 link it, you're good to go. So yeah, um, those are the most important stuff, the, the most important stuff uh, for the starting out. Um, from the showcase, we have, I would recommend trying to do what I did. So try to corrupt your shield. Um, it took me a lot of tries. Um, to get plus two level of second aluminium gems. You can find it on trades. You can find it probably cheap right now before people play this build or if anybody plays, the, plays this build besides me. Um, if you can get the plus two, uh, two level of socket minion gems, it's insane. So you will scale the golem level up even more. Um, the corruption is very good. Um, outside of that, I would say this is big change. So the replica dragon fangs fights I only included in the end game version of the build where you already have the timeless jewel because you really do not want to um, screw around with all the ability uh, stuff on this and um, it lets you drop reservation node from here um, you can drop this node once you have the dragon flights and uh, sorry dragon flight the, wow sorry um the dragon fang flight um and you want to get it with the plus three to all summon stone golems gems this again puts your damage way upwards compared to the starting out where I put only plus two amulets. Uh, by the way, normally plus two amulets are pretty tough to get. This league, it's super easy. I mean, with the graver crafting, there is like a flood of them on the on the trade side. I checked it and you can get them for very, very cheap. So yeah, and the, I think most, most uh, expensive item on this build, Polaric Devastation, uh, I got it for 10 div. I have no, I'm not sure how much it is right now. I can even check, but it's probably not terrible. I mean, at least I hope so. Uh, it is 8 div at the moment. So this is probably cost of this, and this is the most of the cost of the build, which you both don't need really. Okay. I got my elegant hubris with 3 minion nodes for 1 div. So it, it really is easy because nobody 
replace that build um yet at least uh so you know you can you can you can really spare a lot of money if you choose not to get those two but they give you more damage not insane amount and it's like i mean this is more of a uh, quality of life also because it gives you increased duration of elements and you want to kind of increase the duration of ignites by but at the same time reduce it i mean it's it's complicated a lot of people playing dd already talked about this for hours and hours so i'll just cut you the the pain of listening about it again and yeah um this is basically it i mean not much more to say um flask so you just put whatever you want quicksilver and silver flask are great you wanna go fast for the sanctum and basically just farm the money for free and just get the build dude and play it that's all i gotta say so um yeah thanks for listening and enjoy the pob for any questions and concerns please just write a comment i answer every single comment in here um if you want you can follow me subscribe on this channel or follow me on twitch uh, i might actually stream a little bit soon because i have more time now so you know i guess see you there or see you in the next video yeah